of the chariots, the William Miller's movement. So the name Leodicians can logically fit only one of the chariots. All the chariots are not Philadelphia. Don't be confused. God zero in. God identifies. He identifies America in the prophecy. He identifies the Catholic movement. He identifies the Protestant movement. He identifies the Seventh-day Adventist movement, Laodicea. Why? People declaring judgment. And they come right after Philadelphia. Don't. There is no getting around that. After the event of the Philadelphian church, there must therefore be a church declaring judgment. And it is a historical fact that after 1844, that in 1844 AD, the very year the Millerite movement came to the end of its appointed course, a new movement, the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, arose, proclaiming, Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is come. Revelation 14 and verse 7. So in spite of the unenviable record, of the Laodicean Church or the messy record is big word here. <clears throat> the founder of its movement, unlike the founders of the movement, honestly states in Testimonies Volume 3, page 225, the message to the Church of Laodicea is a startling denunciation and is applicable to the people of God at the present time. The Seventh day Adventist declaring the judgment as well as being in the undone condition described. This SDA church is the only one which can rightly be called. Laodicea, declaring judgment, but an absolute match between description and, and condition. Mm -hmm. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together, for he hath magnified his word above all his name. Let me repeat that. Amen. Read that for me. Psalm. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together, for he hath magnified his word above all his name. Magnify. Since both Amen. the third chariot and the Philadelphian church have been identified as representing the church is representing the Millerite movement and also since the Laodicean has been identified as representing the Seventh-day Adventist SDA movement, then it is incontrovertible follows that the fourth chariot, the last chariot <coughs> is symbolical of the SDA church, the Laodicea. Is there any question now? Pass that again. No, you have covered the grounds on every angle, every is, which way. Is there quest <laughs> any question now who God is identifying here? Don't take this personal, please. Don't take this personal. This is not a matter of 
You are there and I am here. I'm there and you are there. God is giving us this clear, unadulterated message, identifying his movement because he loves his people and want us to acknowledge that when our time comes, we stand up like a man and take it, take and face our responsibility that God has given us. When we walk in faith, we are walking in the truth that God is sprinkling on our way. We are walking in the light that the Holy Spirit is shining on our path. We cannot stop and say we have faith. We have to walk in faith. And that's one of the meanings here. One of the meanings is to be able to walk through the history and the prophetic word and nail down your position and deal with it. Make no excuse. God doesn't accept excuse. It's absurd to make excuse to God. He shows us that those who were first invited made the excuse and he said they will never taste of this feast. You don't have to subject yourself to that. When he makes his decision <coughs> It's for us to make our change. <laughs> when God makes his decision, it's for us to make our 180 turn. <coughs> Sorry about that. When God makes his decision, it's not for you to stay there and whimper and try to, uh, to explain away. <coughs> it's not for you to try there and explain away the, what he's saying. <coughs> Sorry about that. Somebody is is insisting. <clears throat> right? The humble thing to do or the sensible thing to do when we run up into God's decision is to humble ourselves and make whatever adjustment. Because it means that he's He's merciful. Mercy. He, has, he has allowed us mm -hmm. to see it before it's too late. Before the time of too late. He has allowed us to see it before the time is too late. To whom much is given, much is required. To the Seventh day Adventist Church is given. All the truth here we have. This is the reformator period. It is stated that Ezekiel had to eat the bread that is defiled with dung, man's input. God has mercy on Ezekiel and gave him cow. But we are left with man's dog. We have to ask mercy now. We can't get away from that. Ezekiel bore the iniquity. But here's where we are. Here's where we are. Which movement has the message of righteousness by faith? Which, which, which movement has the message of the Holy Spirit? 
together with faith. Who teach or who teaches the message of grace and faith, the grace of God? Who teach baptism by immersion with grace, the Holy Spirit, and faith? Who teach the 2300 days with baptism by immersion, grace, the Holy Spirit, and faith that was restored in the dark ages as we have seen there in the black horse and the white horse and the Grizzland Bay. Who teach the Sabbath and the sanctuary, the 2300 days, baptism by immersion, Grace, the Holy Spirit, faith, all in one, but not a little piece of this and a little piece of that. There's only one, and that's the movement after the Millerites. It's called the Seventh Day Adventist movement. You know what? You don't mind me not flashing and dashing. I'll flash and dash at the right time. <laughs> you know, I have my big screen there as I used to do, <clears throat> but a teacher likes to use a simple teaching aid. I'm teaching, I'm not preaching. This movement before God, ch God's church where there is no compromising is the Seventh-day Adventist. But he had identified through the New Testament, contained in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament explained in the New Testament that this is saying the eleventh hour message is here, and when it is caught, the eleventh hour, the eleventh hour would have struck. It would be the eleventh hour, the last. And so we still have a chance because if we, if we acknowledge that this is where we are, then it's time to search, it's time to gravel. It is time to search for that lost coin. It is time to search for that valuable thing. All the parables are telling us, are pointing us to the end time movement. Search. If it is important, search. It's no time to play games. Deeper salvation is crucial. There will be a separation. There will be a purification. There will be a cleansing. Amen. And God's church will become a church without spot or wrinkle. That's what the brass mounting is really talking about. Lord, hasten the day. They are declaring judgment. Judgment. They are declaring judgment. <clears throat> uh, in God's remnant church, there is conflict. And that conflict, make no mistake about it, it's not between me and you, it's between God and Satan. It's bigger than us. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. conflict in God's house is between God and Satan. So don't let us get in any squabble or any squabbling over this because we can't solve it. We can't change this. Stick to what God is saying. Because he's shining the light. And we have no excuse not to see. Uh, why grizzle? 
the the similar teams itched to the fourth chariot, each pulling in different direction from the other. Show not only that there is a double leadership in the Laodicean movement, The New Testament containing the whole. Everybody gets three hours. The early church gets three hours. This is the day and this is the night. One 24 hour explaining man's redemption from the beginning to the end, to the second coming. <clears throat> New Testament contained in the Old. God here has shown that the Israelites, just as the Bible, the first books that Moses wrote, are coming on and turning the night, the oral tradition into the blazing sun, the Bible is in the blaze is the blazing sun. The Bible is a light. And it, just as the sun is the light of the day. <clears throat> God is consistent. The ceremonial system that was pointing to Christ got three hours. Christ went out. Read Matthew chapter 20. Early in the morning to hire workers, laborers from the marketplace. Then he went out the third hour, giving this one three hours to complete its, their message. It is clear. Then he went out again not the fourth hour, not the fifth hour, the sixth hour, giving the next set of workers this sacrificial movement, teaching the ceremony, the priestly ceremony of animal sacrifice ended with the true sacrifice, Christ crucified. This phase out. So this is present truth now. Brand new. Christ had never died before. Brand new message. Millerites. 2300 day. Brand new message. Ellen White. Brand new message, the cleansing of the sanctuary, the moving into the holy of holies and not coming to earth as William Miller thought. That was the last uh, three, six and nine, showing that they were one finished, the same year, 1844, one was to take up, that is why it, it read the six and nine. Brand new, original message, 11th hour, original, because this is the message of the judgment, but there's emergency, and because something went wrong, maybe they didn't want to see the judgment of the living message, that it was wrapped up in there and that the work couldn't be finished without advanced truth. So every single one, except the ninth hour workers, finished their three hours, but they couldn't. Right inside here. Couldn't come before, couldn't come after, because this is the end of the world. This is 12 o'clock.
This is midnight. It is done. It is finished. One hour. Give them only one hour. Mm. These only did two hours out of their three hours. It is crystal clear. The Old Testament contained in the, the New Testament contained in the New in the Old. And that's what we are looking at. Grizzly color is neither white or black or it's <coughs> it's man-made. It's cook up. Cooked up. Man, Ezekiel tells us that man <coughs> interwoven into God's truth. Turn it how they want it, how it fit the script of man. And that's why God sees it as grizzle movement. Grizzle movement. It's neither white nor black. It's not a natural color. Faintish, grayish. Why do you think God calls the beast nondescript? It's because the Jews and the Romans, they, 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 they wrap up their laws and when they, when they see, it see it convenient, they jump to the Jew and they jump to the Romans and they jump to this and they jump to... And nobody could follow their law because there was no law. Well, they changed <laughs> like green lizards. And they use that to condemn your Savior. And they use that to slaughter God's people. The red horses, the first set of workers. They use the nondescript. And they use that also to infiltrate God's church. They kill those pagans who didn't want to change into Christianity and infiltrate and contaminate God's church. They kill them and they pay some and give them some white robes and send them into God's church to preach to God's people. Know your history, how you're bound to repeat it. The same trick they are using on us today. They are infiltrating God's church, institutionalized, and make it look like a big giant. Oh, you can't shake Goliath. This is a worldwide thing. This is strong. Uh, this is powerful. You little Nazarenes, go away, go away, stop disturbing us. But you know what God says? He described the disciples as locust, locust swarm. And the more they, the more they execute or ex excommunicate the apostles, is the more persecution spreads the gospel. Persecution spread the truth. The nondescript beast changed his strategy and he said, okay, we are we are we are slaughtering these people. We're martyring them. Let's go to the drawing board. Let's make a plan. Let's draw a plan. Well look, we will pay those pagans to join the church. We will not kill them anymore. We will join them. And they came in and they rubbed the head, uh, rubbed butter and puss mouth and puss that lick butter. <laughs> meow, meow. Meow. And puss lick butter. And then God's church. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's go for this ride. It's not too bad. 
this, ah, uh, this. Nothing is wrong with this. Nothing is wrong with that. Mm. Let's have a drink. Mm. <laughs> let's let's eat what we want. Nothing is wrong with that. Uh, the the Bible says that those who say nothing is wrong with that. It's because they are dead and the dead knows nothing. So if you find yourself or your friend telling you that nothing is wrong with this, that and the other in God's church, tell them that this dead knows nothing. God has nothing to do with the dead. He said, let the dead bury their dead. But you have been called at this time to understand and to proclaim the kingdom of God. Amen. You have been called. Don't spoil it with God. You are going to be alone. It's going to be lonely sometimes. But it's the fittest of the fittest that shall stand. There is nothing that can fit you but what God sanctions. <clears throat> doesn't matter whether you are a preacher, you are a doctor of divinity. doesn't matter what your status is. It's just one way. And it's, it goes up and it gets narrow. Mm -hmm. It gets narrow. Not even your stocking you can wear. You have to take them off. This is real. This is real. They are both in the same church. It's found in the Laodicean. They are found in the Seventh-day Adventist. They are each together. <coughs> but soon though, the grizzle will be on each. And you notice that God didn't pay the grizzly any mind anymore. He just cut them loose and tell the, the, the bay, the natural color, to go. Get the ants. <coughs> Get the ants. So the, the tug of war and the struggle in God's church is not you and I. <coughs> it's Satan and God. <coughs> so don't take it on yourself because you can't manage it. Assemble yourself and go on to searching for God's walking in faith and not by sight. That doesn't mean what you may think it means. Because Abraham shows us that to walk in faith and not by sight is to obey what God is saying. <laughs> Obey what he is saying, not necessarily what he said, <coughs> because he gives a message in every dispensation Up to date. that is to fit you and the condition that exists around you. And the message right now is judgment. Why be? So grizzly is just man-made and God will ignore them, ignore their ministry, ignore their movement. But why be? He said that be is strength. Be color denotes strength. You have to be strong. You come up against a lot of things. <coughs> You're not in the forefront. You push aside, but be strong. You are in the right direction. You are only trying to finish the gospel work. It's your charge. It will be done. It's the only way God's last movement can finish the work. It's the last movement that gets the charge. All the others will have to line up. You didn't hear that. It is God's last movement 
that has been given the charge to finish the work, the others will have to line up. <coughs> God, God's method is His method, not ours. We can't change that. When we try to change it, it is labeled in the Bible as man's dome. Man's tongue. You don't want man's tongue to bake your bread. I guarantee you that. Uh, those are too much, too, too much a, 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 a hogly language to use, right? <coughs> it's in the Bible. Yes, some people can't handle the Bible. It is too rusty, it is too rigid, it is too fierce. But the Bible tells us that there is a grizzle movement, a man-made, man-made movement. The color, <coughs> the old strength. They are not in the forefront. <coughs> they are not in the forefront. Let's take a break. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a break. Just in Jesus, just to take him at his word. That's not lip service. That's not lip service. Let's sing the lighthouse. You have it? Lighthouse. lighthouse. It's one of my favorites. The lighthouse. Yes, let us do more than lip service. We have enough lip service out there. We have a love, sweet mouth. We have enough charmers in God's church. We want people to as the, as the phrase said, cut to the chase. Tell it as it is. Don't hop. Don't hypocrite around this. Don't hop around. Because they will call you hypocrite. And it is said, That her mother went to prison to visit her son. And as the conversation, as they were reasoning, the son said, Mommy, Come a little closer. Put your hair. Your hair right here. Let me speak into your ear. And it, as it is said in the story that the gold man put his mouth to his mom's ear. And he pulled out his teeth and he moved them in position over the ear of his mother.
honey and cage a certain amount of PSI pressure per square inch I'm like a predator to a prey he severed his mother's ear with his teeth and he said following that savagery you hide you hit the truth from me and that's why I'm behind Bob Are you one of those mothers who fail to show tough love? Are you one of those preachers with smooth doctrines? Pacify the congregation. Well, let me tell you this. Those same member will chastise you and say and ask you the same question. Why? Why you hid the truth from us? So don't follow anybody and hide the truth. Don't tell lies to keep the flow. It's not worth it. If we knew what it meant by the blood being on your shoulder, would make the wise move now. It's a lighthouse on the hilltop that overlooks my sea and it must it sounds like a light that
the big ships just don't pass this way anymore. Because <laughs> there's no use and it's standing around. Uh, but then, then my mind goes back to that one dark stormy night when just in time I saw the light yes it was that it was that whole light that stood there upon that hill somewhere out there. But you have not yet hit shore. So why struggle when you are near the shore? Why spin around when you are near the shore? The light is there. It's for you to focus 
May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the comfort and rest remain and abide with you. Be delivered, be anointed, follow the light, stay focused, uh, acknowledge what God has acknowledged, identify with what God has identified, make the adjustment if it's if you if you see that the necessity if you're convicted don't waste your conviction don't waste your conviction act on it faith is stay in step with god Amen. God bless you. We shall return. Yes, we shall return. And remember our Christmas in July program. Don't forget. Stay tuned. God bless you. Share.